six, six, one, two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We need one more in the building as we come out of executive session. One, two, three, four, five, oh, six, seven, oh, eight, eight, back eight, 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 <laughs> All right, we come out of executive session. We're still in the debate portion on this LR. And at this time, we've uh, got into deep discussion. As a body, we've agreed to put this LR into committee for further discussion. And we'll ask the Secretary of the House, Secretary Otro, which committee should we assign this LR to? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Speaker, we need a motion to recommend to send the committee to the second. All right, we need a motion on the floor to recommend for this LR to be sent to committee. We have a floor recognized senator not afraid of the Lodgegrass District. I'll make that motion, Mr. Speaker. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Second. Second by Senator Glozahead. Do we have a question? Question by Senator Backbone of the Reno District. All those in favor? of sending this LR to committee for further discussion, raise your right hand. <laughs> All those opposed? All those abstaining? Motion carries with a vote of 14 yes, 0 no, 0 abstain for this LR to be referred to committee. Floor recognizes Senator Okro, Secretary of the House, to assign this LR to committee. Uh, my recommendation would be to send to the uh, treaty committee to the uh, issue of government to government relationships. Okay, so he recommends this. Does the Treaty Committee accept this LR, Senator covers up of the Lodgegrass District? Yes. All right, so it will now be an LR in committee with the Treaty Committee for organized Senator not afraid of the Lodgegrass District. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members of the body, in concurrence with the directive by the Secretary, I'd like to strongly encourage um, through the speaker and also through the committee chair uh, covers it, the honorable covers up that they coordinated with legal counsel that they contact that we contact uh, native voice to get uh, an invitation out to these candidates so that we can meet with them during special session just a thought mr speaker thank you okay so we will look into that as having an invitation to be sent out to all candidates to come and address the body, and then we can move forward with the LR after we have heard from who's ever interested in coming and talking to the legislative branch of the Great Crow Nation. With that, we come to the end of our session, but the floor now recognizes Senator Stewart of the Black Lodge District. Oh, Mr. Speaker, Secretary, members, at this time I, I wanted to yield the floor for um, Legal Counsel Jay Harris to read it to record uh, an audit finding, an OIG audit finding. So at this time, Mr. Speaker, if you read the floor. The floor organizes in house counsel Jay Harris. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Secretary, members of the body, the legal office earlier this week received a copy of a report from the United States Department of Justice, Office of the Inspector General Audit Division. It is a report titled Audit Report GR 60 12 007. It is an audit of Office of Community Oriented Policing Services grants awarded to the Crow Tribe of Indians, dated March 2012. Mr. Speaker, I'll begin by reading the executive summary of this report. 
The Office of the Inspector General Audit Division has completed an audit of Office of Community Oriented Policing Services, or COPS, grants awarded to the Crow Tribe of Indians of Montana. The audit included four grants. One, COPS Tribal Court Pilot Program Grant Number 2005-HE-WX-0005 in the amount of $441,000. Two, COPS Tribal Resources Grant Program, grant number 2007-HE-WX-0039 in the amount of $398,000, $398,901, excuse me. Three, COPS Methamphetamine Initiative Grant number 2007-CK-WX-0313 in the amount of $300,000. $99,157. And four, COPS Hiring Recovery Program Grant Number 2009-RK-WX-0520 in the amount of $476,474,000. The tribe was awarded a total of $1,385,532 to implement the grant programs as shown in Exhibit 1. The purpose of the TCPP grant was to further develop the justice system. Budgeted items include partial funding for three court positions, goods and services to assist personnel, and 100 hours of evaluation services. The purpose of the TRGP grant was to increase the visibility of tribal police in the community and increase vehicle patrols on the reservation. Budgeted items included equipment, uniforms, and vehicles for tribal police officers. The purpose of the METH grant was to address partnership development, prevention, training, and intelligence gathering. Budgeted items included fully funding, a METH project coordinator, equipment and supplies for police work, and for recording and storing, storing data related to METH usage, community events, overtime for officers participating in METH-related work, METH training, and a program evaluation. The purpose of the CHRP grant was to create jobs and increase community police capacity. Budgeted items included fully funding one entry-level sworn officer for three years. The COPS office was established as a result of the Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act of 1994 to assist law enforcement agencies in enhancing public safety through the implementation of community policing strategies in jurisdictions of all sizes across the country. Community policing focuses on proactive, collaborative efforts to prevent and respond to crime, social disorder, and fear of crime. COPS provides funding to state, local, and tribal law enforcement agencies to hire and train community policing professionals, acquire and deploy cutting-edge crime-fighting technologies, and develop and test innovative policing strategies. The TCPP and TRGP are part of a series of programs created to meet the needs of law enforcement in Native American communities. COPS Meth Funding supports enhancement training and prevention activities nationwide, but is concentrated in areas with the greatest need for assistance in combating methamphetamine production, distribution, and use. The CHRP is funded through the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009, Public Law 111-5. It provides funding directly to law enforcement agencies to support new hires, rehires, and or retained career law enforcement officers in an effort to create and preserve jobs and to increase their community policing capacity and crime prevention efforts. The Crow Tribe of Indians, originally called the Absalaga, has approximately 11,000 members, 7,900 of whom reside on the Crow Indian Reservation. The reservation is located in south central Montana and encompasses approximately 2.3 million acres. The Crow Indian Reservation was established by treaty in 1851. Two components of the tribe were most impacted by the grants, the judicial branch and the police department. The tribe repealed its 1948 constitution, replacing it with the Crow Constitution and Bylaws of 2001. The purpose of the new constitution was to provide separation of powers and to establish an independent tribal court. The Bureau of Indian Affairs Police Department Crow Agency Office has jurisdiction over Indians on the reservation. The current police force consists of federal police officers paid under the BIA Law Enforcement Services and tribal officers paid under the tribe's general fund. The purpose of this audit was to determine whether reimbursements claimed for costs under the grant were allowable, 
supported and in accordance with the applicable laws, regulations, guidelines, and terms and conditions of the grant, and to, deter and to determine program performance and accomplishments. The objective of our audit was to review performance in the following areas. One, internal control environment. Two, drawdowns. Three, grant expenditures, including personnel and indirect costs. Four, budget management and control. Five, matching. Six, property management. Seven, program income. Eight, financial status and progress reports. Nine, grant requirements. 10, program performance and accomplishments. And 11, monitoring of subgrantees and contractors. In addition to the objectives above, for CHRP grant number 2009-RK-WX-0520, we also reviewed performance in the following areas. One, application statistics. Two, officer type funded and entry level salary positions. Three, supplanting. Four, retention plan. And five, community policing plan. We determined that matching program income and monitoring of subgrantees were not applicable to these grants. We examined the tribe's accounting records, financial and progress reports, and operating policies and procedures and found receiving procedures were not adequate as, they, as there were not sufficient controls to ensure that the terms and services bill matched those received. $186,287 in unallowable contract expenditures for grant number 2005-HE-WX-0005 that were not included in the approved grant budget. $1,589 in unsupported equipment and supplies expenditures for grant number 2007-HE-WX-0039. $252 $1,478 in unallowable equipment and supplies expenditures for grant number 2007-HE-WX-0039, which included eight vehicles not used for purposes specified in the grant. $6,499 in unsupported expenditures for grant number 2007-CK-WX-0313. $1,369 in unallowable travel and training costs for grant number 2005-HE-WX-0005 incurred by persons not authorized to receive training under the grants. $12,424 in unallowable travel and training costs for grant number 2007-HE-WX-0039 incurred by persons not authorized to receive training under the grants. $1,095 in unsupported travel and training costs for grant number 2007-HE-WX-0039. $3,784 in unallowable travel and training costs for grant number 2007-CK-WX-0313 incurred by persons not authorized to receive training under the grants. The tribe transferred budgeted funds among direct cost categories in excess of 10% of the total award amount for grant number 2005-HE-WX-0005. $21,506 in unallowable salaries and fringe benefits expenditures for grant number 2005-HE-WX-0005 for an unapproved court position. $6,125 in excess expenditures for grant number 2007-CK-WX-0313 for duplicate payroll charges caused by an internal control weakness in the accounting system. $4,288 in unallowable fringe benefit expenditures for grant number 2005-HE-WX-0005 for charges not identified in the approved budget. Equipment purchased with grants number 2007-HEWX-0039 and 2007-CK-WX-0313 was not adequately monitored or identifiable as federally funded. $10,316 in unverifiable accountable property for grant number 2007-CK-WX-0313 for two thermal cameras. For grant number 
WX0005 tribe officials did not seek or obtain approval from COPS prior to a sole source procurement in contracted legal services for $128,537. For grant number 2007-HE-WX-0039, the tribe's use of, a, of grant resources did not, significantly, excuse me, did not significantly contribute to the development of tribal law enforcement infrastructure or support community policing. For grant number 2009-RK-WX-0520, the tribe reported data in the CHRP application that was inaccurate were not possible to replicate in seven instances. $25,593 in excess payroll expenditures for grant number 2009-RK-WX-0520 that exceeded entry-level salary and fringe benefit levels. And for grant number 2009-RK-WX-0520, the tribe did not fully enact the community policing plan outlined in the completed 2009 CHRP grant application. These items are discussed in detail in the findings and recommendations and supplemental review of 2009 COPS Hiring Recovery Program sections on the report. Our audit objectives, scope, and methodology are discussed in Appendix 1. Mr. Speaker, this audit continues with its table of contents and then uh, thorough explanation <coughs> in the contents of the reasoning behind each one of the <coughs> findings in the audit of the COPS Grants Awarding Control Tribe. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I believe that it would be in the best interest of the legislature and of course in the best interest of the Crow Tribe to take serious notice of this finding by the U.S. Department of Justice Office of Inspector General to make this report a part of the legislative journal for the October quarterly session 2012 and to refer this to the appropriate committee for further re review and further investigation. So to make a point clear, after adding those uh, 20 findings we have a total of question costs for 213,450, total question costs for 267,586, total question costs for 26,724, total question costs for 25,593, which brings a total of unallowable costs, a total to $533,353. And that's in the appendix two of the audit report and the document. The floor now recognizes Senator Stewart of the Black Lodge District. The whole Mr. Speaker, Secretary and members, I, I thank um, our legal counsel for reading that directly. Um, the, one, the one thing I had, I had a question for um, um, legislative legal Jay Harris, is that is, if there was any um, response from either uh, any of the four officials or the comptroller. I want, maybe if there was, if there was something to that effect, maybe we can read that to record as well. All right. Um, I believe in part of the audit report there was a response uh, signed by Kristen Johnson, CPA for the Crow Tribe comptroller. Would it be okay for me to read this into the record, just the latter part of the uh, response letter? Uh, yeah, I would appreciate that, Mr. Speaker. Okay. I think that's I'm going to read it. And this would be in the audit report. And it states, again, the Crow tribe is seeking leniency in regards to repayment of the question costs. The Crow tribe has experienced this a serious downturn in general fund revenues. Our main source of general fund revenues is, expect, is expected to be reduced by half in the current and next fiscal year. This source of rev revenue is from the coal industry. It has been hampered due to the economy and an unforeseen explosion at the main power plant, which purchases our coal. We are requesting any type of remedy other than financial at this time. <coughs> 
If the tribe does, does have to make a financial repayment, it will have to reduce services from the general funds. This could affect the current general fund budgets for prosecution, public defenders, police department assistant, assistance, and fish and game. This will only hurt the community we are trying so hard to serve. If financial remedy cannot be avoided, we are requesting the ability to make installment payments over the next five years. We are trying very hard to be good stewards of our awards, but we recognize that we still have many improvements to make. Please let us know what else we can do to improve our organization. We are committed to maintaining a good standing with all federal agencies. Please call us with any further questions or comments. Sincerely, Kristen Johnson, CPA, Crow Tribe Comptroller. Well, that's the response letter from the tribe. And we've got, uh, for a complete copy of the OIG audit report of the COPS grant, people can Google search Crow Tribe COPS grant audit and then download the PDF file. The whole audit is on there. It's quite an extensive uh, report. So, you know, the information is there for the people. We just received this recently in a matter just a few days ago and are going through it ourselves. We've got it on record now. We'll be going through this, through going over this audit report through our special session beginning on next Monday. Floor organizer, Senator Stewart. Hello, Mr. Speaker, Secretary, and members, and um, guests on live stream. I want to make a request with, with the information that has just been released. I wanted to make um, a recommendation and request that in special session that maybe we, this body can bring forward a legislative resolution um, investigating, asking OIG to bring us more information towards any of these contracts, grants, and awards that have been put in this um, situation. I believe, um, I think uh, this, this body can do that. Uh, it would be in the best interest of the poor people to to look after their their, um, their best interests you know, to bring something forward from the uh, Office of Inspector General and I think it would be in the best interest to go forward with legislative resolution and make that an official request. Thank you, Senator Stewart. So will that be during the special session beginning on Monday? Yeah, I believe so. I believe we have to go ahead and look at it and right. possibly read the whole document into record. And I'd like to make this uh, part of the record as well. Okay. <laughs> All right, that was part of the announcements portion of our agenda. Are there any more announcements? Or we'll organize the Senator go to the, the prior district. Uh, Mr. Speaker, thank you, um, Secretary, members of the body. I would like to further make a comment on the findings of this uh, report, the audit report that was just read. And, and for the live stream audience, as well as all the pro people, you know, that's why uh, the Bitcoin District uh, Senators went out and got 10% signatures of the bill 10 02 to resent 04 05 of 638 contracts because 04 05, there's language that was in there in 2004 where this is all compliance of the reporting. And so just what was read into record shows why uh, we passed 10-02 to bring in 638 contracts back to the legislative approval, the process of developing that, that process to approve 638 contracts back to this branch. So I just would like to make that comment to the live stream audience as well as the pro people and to the body here. And that's my comment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. All right, thank you. 
We are still in the announcements portion. And we're four recognizes Senator Stewart of the Black Lodge District. Real brief one, Mr. Speaker and Secretary members. Um, I believe there was a media release by the Department of Justice concerning the, the Justice Department announces policy on tribal member use of eagle feathers. I think this is a big uh, thing towards Indian country. And um, I don't want to read the whole thing. I think there's a lot here. Um, Attorney General Eric Holder signed the new policy after extensive department consultation with tribal leaders and tribal groups. And it says the policy covers all federally protected birds, bird, uh, bird feathers, and bird parts. And uh, the policy itself, and I'm going to go to the second page of anybody who's got this document here, it says the policy provides that consistent with the Department of Justice traditional exercise of its direct discretion, a member of a federally recognized tribe engaged only in the following types of conduct will not be subject to prosecution. Possessing, using, wearing, or carrying federally protected birds, bird feathers, or other bird parts, federally protected bird parts. Two, traveling domestically with federally protected bird parts or if tribal members obtain and comply with necessary permits. Traveling internationally with such items. Picking up natural naturally molten or fallen feathers found in the wild without molesting or disturbing federally protected birds or their nests, giving or loaning federally protected bird parts to other members of federally recognized tribes without compensation of any kind, exchanging federally protected bird parts for federally protected bird parts with other members of federally recognized tribes without compensation of any kind. Provided the feathers or other parts of federally protected birds to crafts person who are members of federally recognized tribes to be fashioned into objects for eventual use in tribal, religious, or cultural <coughs> activities. The Department of Justice will continue to prosecute tribal members and non non-members alike for violating federal laws that prohibit the killing of eagles and other migratory birds or the buying or selling of the eagle feathers <coughs> or other parts of such birds. Mr. Speaker, at this time, this um, announcement that was has been set forth, I think it's a big win for Indian country because right now that um, it gives a lot of um, um, flexibility to the tribes and tribal members to carry their eagle feathers for for um, whatever may be the case, their war bonnets, their fans, and even at that, they can they can hand it down to to members, friends, feathers without having to be prosecuted. And so uh, this is going to be on display here as well. Another announcement too, Bulldogs are running in state at the uh, LMS. So I uh, wish them good luck. Yeah. All right, thank you, Senator Stewart. It brings us, we had modified our agenda to move uh, approval of the journal to the last of the agenda. And for recognizing the senator not afraid of the Lodge Grass District. Just a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the body. Just a question to Senator Stewart. Is that all classes that are running at state? Do they still do that? All four classes A, class AA, et cetera? Yes. Okay, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to mention the Lodge Grass Indians. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My daughter also goes to school at St. LeBray, so St. LeBray Braves, and that's my alma mater. All right. Bulldogs, it took you soon. This kid, good luck, Bulldogs. Constitutes <laughs> all the way around. Thank you. Yep, yeah. yeah, you got to wish luck to the Warriors as well. So yeah. these Warriors. So with that, uh, we're going to recognize Secretary of the House Oak Crow for the journals. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, on your desks were the legislative branch journals for your approval. July 2012 quarterly session, August 29, 2012 special session, October 1st and 2nd, 2012 special session. Uh, if you have had a chance to review them, uh, we need your approval, so we need a motion to uh, adopt. Thank you. 
for recognizing the senator not afraid of the Lodge Grass District. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members of the body, I move that we accept the journal as written. We have a motion on the floor, second by Senator Carrozzo, question Question by Senator Backbone. All those in favor of accepting the journals, raise your right hand. <laughs> All those opposed? All those abstaining? Motion carries for approval of the journals. 14 yes, 0 no, 0 abstain. That brings us to the end of our agenda. If there's no more announcements, <coughs> for organized the Senator not afraid of the Lodge Grass District. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members of the body, um, it was just just been brought to my attention by legal counsel that um, no water, in accordance with uh, Crow tribal law, is now officially recognized as a cultural district. Um, the request that I have, Mr. Speaker, is during special session sometime. Let us invite uh, some of the no water district members to officially have the speaker announce their recognition as recognized by crow law passed by this branch it did go through the pocket veto process well, we as a branch overrode that veto and at, in accordance to tribal law, it became law the first day of this session. Case in point, Mr. Speaker. All right, duly noted. So we will look at uh, recognizing an official recognition during special sessions. But they are a legal cultural district now. Do we have any more announcements? <coughs> If we have no more announcements, no more announcements, we will call for a motion to adjourn. Make that motion to adjourn, Mr. Speaker. Motion to adjourn by Senator Goldflehead. Second by Senator Backbone of the Reno District. <coughs> Question. Question by Senator Don Afraid of the Lodge Grass District. All those in favor and adjournment, say aye. 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 We are now adjourned. Oh, I want to be